Hello everyone. So today we're going to talk about avocados and specifically guacamole, everybody's favorite Super Bowl food. Um, first, just a little lesson and backstory on avocados. As you see here, I have my selection of produce that I'm going to use. I have my Haas avocados, my Mexican Haas. I have my onion, my jalapenos, my tomatoes, my limes. My garlic off to the side, and over here I have my fresh cilantro that I'll go over everything one by one. So just the first first off, we see here, these guys here, these are perfectly ripened avocados, all right? Now you want to find some, preferably from Mexico, Mexican Haas, especially if they have this brand, the Calavo brand. It's probably one of the better ones, and you guys see right there, it says avocados from Mexico. Okay, as much as I love Peru and Dominican Republic and all those places... The best avocados come from Mexican Haas or California Haas, which is the same crop. So these guys have been ripened. These are ready to go. They're a little under, but they're perfect for guacamole, okay? If you see on this side, these are green. These are the same avocados, just not ripened. Okay, you can see this one's green, this one's black. Okay, the difference is being, let me just put this over here. So we have two avocados, okay? This one's a little bigger, but it's the same thing. It's a Haas avocado. When you go to the store, any good avocado connoisseur, you want to get them green like this and ripen them yourself. Every restaurant does that. Every good cook or chef who knows anything about avocados does that, okay? The reason being that if you go to the store and you buy it like this, you can't really control it. You don't know if this avocado is black because it was refrigerated or if it dropped on the floor or someone was playing soccer with it down the aisle of the supermarket, you don't know. So you can always know this, that if you get it green like this, perfect, and it's smooth, it's very, very hard. I mean, you can hear that, but you don't want to do that too hard because it'll bounce, um, it bruise it, okay? Our cows are very delicate. Even when you have them like this, you have to delicately place them wherever you have them, so nice and delicately. You don't drop it, and it'll cause a bruise. That I mean, that goes with any fruit that's like this, apples, other things, they all bruise. Pineapples, if they fall from a great height, they'll bruise easily, okay? Now, I've taken all the stems off of these, okay? Usually, if you're in the supermarket and you, you think you know you've seen a good one that's dark and black, this this right here where the stem meets the fruit, you could kind of peel this off. I'll just do it now to show you. And if you do it and it's still green on the black one, that means it's good. If you open that and it's black inside or mushy, or you could actually even... Push that pit in, that's a sign of a bad avocado. We don't want that, okay? So let me put these guys aside. But first off, let me show you again. We have these beautiful jalapenos that we're going to use in our recipe. Okay, these ones are really nice. Picked them up at the market today. They're very big, actually. So we might cut down the amount. Um, but they're very beautiful um, what are jalapenos, okay? We have our limes, or lemon verde, green lemons, as they say in Spanish or other countries. So we have these nice, firm, juicy limes. We have our really big onion, because I'm going to go over some knife skills in this lesson as well. So this is about a pound and a half onion, a jumbo Spanish onion, okay? And then we have our Roma tomatoes, which I'm also going to show you how to cut and seed these. And it's the same way we're going to do it for the bruschetta for crostini, okay? So just put those aside, Okay. Okay, great. So we're going to go over the mise en place for the recipe as well as some techniques on how to do the knife skills. Okay. Um, I have stuff for the recipe as well as some other vegetables like pumpkin, plantain to show you how to fabricate just for the heck of it, just to give you an idea of things since we're not in person. If you see here on my right, I have some beautiful cilantro. Okay, the thing with cilantro though is that it can come and be very sandy, okay? For some reason, good cilantro grows in like a dirt-sand kind of combination, hydroponically. But you can see these guys are very beautiful and very um, delicate leaves. They're not bruised, so I wash them. So make sure if you get cilantro, even if it's not sandy, you want to wash it really good. Best thing to do is soak it in water and keep bobbing it up and down lightly until the sediment settles to the bottom of the bowl of water. Take it out, let it air dry on some paper towel. Okay, the lid, you don't want to wrap it up tight in paper towel. You don't want to hit it like this to get it wet because you're just going to bruise that beautiful leaf of cilantro. And look, it's already wilted. How sad. Okay. 
So first things first, I'm going to hold off on the avocado because I want to do that last. And I'll give you some tips on how to open it and to keep it from browning. Okay. So firstly, I just want to start showing you how we cut an onion properly. Okay. So this is our jumbo onion. Okay. So with anything that is rounded, and let me just get my beautiful avocados to the side. Notice I'm really delicate with them. Okay. So we have two parts. This is the top here. This is where the stem grows out, and this is the root on the bottom, okay, the hairy part, okay, needs a little haircut. We will help it with that, all right? So, this part, when you're dicing, you want to keep on, and you cut this off. The only time you keep an onion whole like this and, and make rounds is when you do an onion rings. Any other application, you always cut the onion in half. This, you don't do this, because you see right now how it's rocking, and that's very dangerous. Things could happen like this, like that. It run away from you so you got to be very careful with these big guys and this is a restaurant standard okay not those little tiny onions that are about this size this is a real <laughs> culinary onion all right so go over here and cut just a little bit to make it just to, and you want to and i'm using and i'm guiding with my finger and i'm pinching holding here near the bolster i'm pinching and holding and wrapping my fingers around so i could get that strand in that motion okay so i'm just gonna cut off maybe about a half an inch and go straight with confidence just go in a little bit and just slice right down none of this sawing action stuff okay you want to get in there and just confidently uh, use your strength and cut it down especially if you have a nice sharp knife like this one okay and these like you remember these are the ones we will be using in class okay so make sure you keep the garbage on the side i have one off camera here so we did that now we have that nice flat edge we're going to put it upright so now what's happened okay it's not going to roll around okay it's sturdy unlike this onion that's going to just whoop okay bye bye all right like a fall on your foot the knife could slip all that stuff so now we have the head so you want to cut evenly right down the middle so that's pretty much it put your fingers on each other side hold it firmly and the same thing go in a little bit and then See, it's like this. I'll bring it closer. Once you're at that point, but flat, confidently just slice through all the way down. Like that. So now you have two halves. All right? So this recipe calls for, I believe, a quarter. <clears throat> I have so many recipes, I can't remember them. Okay? Half a cup of small dice. So half a cup is probably about half of this guy right here. Or if you had a small onion. So you see, now that we cut this in half, over here, it keeps everything together. The layers of the onion all kept together. That's why we keep this there. It's for a reason. Okay? So make sure clean down your area. Keep it clean. Put it on the garbage. You can have a garbage bowl over here, or I have my garbage off to the side. Keep everything clear. Okay? So now, we're going to just take off some of the paper. All right? Don't be afraid if you're taking off a layer or so. It's a really nice fresh onion. Also, you want to use good fresh onions. Never refrigerate them because they'll get slimy and they won't stay as long and you can see this one is very nice and firm and shiny okay older onions will start to de develop like a slime thing underneath here and when you cut sometimes it'll make your knife slip and you don't want that okay okay so for the dice we're gonna make lines this way and we're gonna make lines this way the reason is so we can get that size with these kind of pre-cuts into the onion half all right, so you want to go in with the knife, hand up, palm up, and you're just going to slice it in this way a little bit. But you're not going to go all the way through to the bottom root or the basil plate, which is called. And carefully take the knife out. Now we have one layer there, you can see. You're going to repeat it a few more times before we go perpendicular to the board. Okay, see, there's another one right there, okay? So we're going for a small dice, which is about a quarter of an inch, okay? Restaurants always use these kind of large onions, A, because they're great for onion rings, but B, because they're really big and easy to handle. If you've got to cut onions that are this big for like three hours, you, don't, you want an onion like this, not something like this. It's harder to clean, there's more labor involved. So now that we got our side cuts, we want to go this way. We're going to cut down here, all right? So carefully, same thing. But we don't want to cut through the basil plate, the root here. The root is what keeps everything together. So when we dice it, it's not all falling apart. The layers are still together. Okay? So go like this. Remember to take your time. 
All right, don't worry about those little pieces. We'll just run them through. So nice and easy. Okay. Just remember, it's not about speed. It's about consistency, okay? These guys I'll save for my stock pot. So now we turn it this way. Now that we have our layers this way, we have our layers that way. Just for the sake of clarity. Now we pinch and hold. We do that claw motion, and we want a small quarter-inch dice, okay? So go in, rock in like this. Nice and slow. I'm doing all this. I'm not going to need all of it, but for the sake of showing you guys some knife skills here. This part, you never waste anything in the kitchen, so we would throw this in a stock pot. I actually am making chicken soup today, so I'll throw that in there. Okay. Now you want to run your knife through it. Check out your cut, and it's pretty much... The natural layers of the onion, along with you putting in those side cuts and the top cuts, make it a very kind of consistent dice, okay? And that will help very much with cooking as well as other things. If you see some other pieces, you can just, you know, run your knife through a little bit just to even it out. If you see some little chunks like that, remember it doesn't have to be 100% perfect, okay? So I'm going to clean this up and put it in my mise en place. Okay, great. So we got our onion on the side, put it in a little container for our mise en place. Now we're going to do some of these Roma tomatoes. And I'm going to show you how to cut them. And this is the proper way to cut a Roma tomato for dicing, for pico de gallo, for salsas, for bruschetta, and for other things that you're adding it into. The reason why is because these are most flavorful and in season, but also um, they have a good firmness to them. And they're pretty tomatoey throughout the season. I mean, they're no San Marzano tomatoes, but they're decent. The reason is that we want to cut it properly so we don't have too much liquid. So the bruschetta or the guacamole that we're doing does not get too watery. Okay, so we have the top here. Okay, this is where the stem meets the plant. And we have the bottom. Okay, now I'm going to hold it the same way I did the onion and just cut it right in half like that. So now we have two nice even pieces. Okay, now I have the stem up here and I have the bottom again right here. So I'm going to cut it right in half down the middle. So now we should have four quarters of our tomato, okay? So we want to remove the juice, the pith, and the seeds, and the inside membrane here, so that when we dice the flesh, it's a nice dice with no liquid, just the tomato, okay? And we do that by carefully going and bring our knife in here at the tip, not at the top, but the tip of the fruit here. And we kind of press down a little with the tip of the knife, just be careful. And then slowly run your knife right underneath. You see how it's just shaving that right out? And then just where the stem is, you clean it and just cut it right out like that. So you have this here, which you don't want, but you can save it for a stock or something like that. And now you're left with just the flesh. Okay? So I'm going to do the rest of these so you can see before I show you how to dice it. Just let the weight and the sharpness of the knife take care of that. Okay, whenever you're doing a task like this, you don't want to do one tomato at a time. You take, seed them all out, then you dice them, and then you finish. You don't do one tomato at a time. Do like an assembly line, okay? All right, so we have these bad boys done. All right, so now skin side down, because if you cut with skin side up, sometimes it's a little waxy. It's the same thing with peppers, and it could slip. Your knife could slip. You don't want that. So, we're going to guide with our finger, and we want a small dice again, so about the same as the other, about a quarter of an inch. So, we're going like this, one, two, three, four, about, okay? Then we turn it this way, and we do the same thing. So, we went from having our julienne to making our dice, our small dice. Same thing again here, okay? Claw method, go through. Nice and easy. Take your time. All right? So then you would get here. This is also good for taco night as well. <laughs> and you have a nice consistent dice of the red tomato, okay? Obviously red tomato, but there's so many colored tomatoes. So, especially if you're doing, i speed it up here for myself. Remember, the speed comes with experience, okay? Because if you do it this way, remember, skin side down, okay? 
Remember, all the way, lift, chop, rocking motion, guys. Okay, once we're in the classroom, we're gonna do a lot of work involving knife skills. Okay, and I don't want to see anybody trying to be speedy. You just have to do this like that, okay? Okay. All right, I have one more tomato here. I'm just gonna show you real quick. Cut it in half, right here from the green, right down the middle. Okay, quarter it. All right. Remove the flesh inside, okay? Remember, throw that in your stock pot, or you could just throw it in the garbage. Most places, they don't really reuse this because it's just too juicy. Sometimes it's a little sour. All right, just remember, let the knife do the work, okay? I'm not putting too much pressure. I'm just letting the sharpness just boom right through. All right, so I'll bang this rest out and put it in my mise en place. All righty, so now we will go and do... Let's see which one we're going to do now. Okay, the jalapenos. And this is a disclaimer with jalapenos. If you're sensitive to jalapenos, make sure you... Or spice, that is. I mean, if you it's too spicy for you. Yeah, I mean, you could omit it completely, but most people like the heat. But when you're cleaning it, you want to make sure you have a glove on because some people forget that they've worked with jalapenos. And then they rub their eyes or rub their face or worse, go to the bathroom without washing their hands first. And that's a bad... You're going to have a bad time, Okay. So it's a nice, beautiful jalapeno. And we're going to cut it almost the same way as we did the um, Roma tomato. Okay, so let's just get rid of a little bit of the stem here. I mean, these are really awesome for like a chili relleno or like um, a stuffed jalapeno popper. These are really huge. I mean, look at the size of my hand. I'm a big dude with big hands. So this is a really big jalapeno. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to quarter this down from the stem. Okay, right through, open it. So as per the recipe, me, I like it spicy. So one of them... I'm going to keep the um, seeds in. Okay, if you want really spicy, you put both. Or you can put even more jalapeno. But for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to just seed them all so you can see. But remember, when you're done with this, you want to wash your knife. Make sure I like to wear a glove. Make sure you wash the cutting board because if you cut something else on there, especially fruit or something sweet or cake, it's going to pick up that spice and burn the next person who's uh, eating or using the board. So we're going to have these guys in half again. I find this is the easiest way to get the seeds out instead of just like getting a spoon and scraping it because sometimes when you're scraping like that, they tend to pop up and pop into your eye, pop into your mouth, pop into somebody else's eye. So you want to just take the tip of the knife like you did with the tomato and just not really going into the flesh. It's going right under, get the white part. The white part is called the pith, okay, P-I-T-H. All right, so we have all that guy right there with the seeds and everything. Okay, we'll put them out inside, discard that. Tap out the remaining seeds and put that aside, okay? Same thing with this bad boy, okay? Just gently let the knife do all the work. You know, I got little kids around here. I'm always cutting things on here for them, so you always want to make sure you use this or use an alternate cutting board, okay? So you can get rid of all the seeds without even, you know, touching it too much. And then we're going to julienne it and do a small dice on these, okay? This recipe calls one jalapeno, okay? So, let me just clean off the rest of the seeds here. Practice my good mise en place. Remember, guys, always work clean and clean as you go. All right, so now I have these guys here, okay? And remember, skin side down, so because it's waxy, and you don't want it to, you don't knife to slip, okay? Same idea, okay? Claw, nice and thin, okay? Okay, take it easy. This one I'm going to go a little bit smaller than the small dice, maybe the large brunoise. Okay, remember, use your fingers to guide. All right, there we go. Okay, nice, small, large brunoise, or in between small dice, same here, okay? I mean, if you have a really super duper sharp knife, you could do skin side up. But I like to teach my students to just do skin side down when it comes to waxy veg, because you don't want to slip. All right, remember claw motion, rocking. Okay, got that guy there. Remember, nice and easy, okay. All right, so I'm gonna finish this up and move on to the next bit. All right, so next we're gonna smash our garlic just like we did in our last recipe, just remember, 
Okay. Smash and fine mints. Okay. Remember, run the knife through, chop. You could also do this in the food processor. Me, I just do, I like to do as I need it. It's not really a good idea to mince up, uh, puree a whole bunch of garlic and just leave it in the fridge because it's going to overpower everything else in the fridge, especially if it's near dairy. Just want to use garlic as you need it. Try not to, fresh is always best. Even if you get the one that's already peeled, it's not the same. you got to get a really good fresh garlic. It shouldn't be green or growing. Okay. It's a little bit of a pain to clean, but it's, the taste is much different. Because once garlic is peeled, it starts to cure and oxidize, which means that it's exposed to the air, and it's not as good as you would want it. Okay. So that's what we want, a nice mince like this. So the recipe says four to six. These were pretty large, so I'm gonna put, you know, four. Get a little smaller. I'm just gonna add it with my onion for the sake of space. I mean, everything is going pretty much into the same bowl and mashing it up. It's one of those one bowl recipes, okay? So let me clean this down. Okay, make sure to keep your mise en place nice and clean. And let's move on to the limes. Okay, the limes we'll use as we need. Me, I like it a little limey. Okay, depending on what you're um, using it with. All right, so I have these nice limes here. So with any citrus, you want to roll it and put pressure on it to break down the cell walls and get that juice going. So, get it nice and... all right, and you'll feel it. It's kind of it's squishier. You can even see it. How I could squish my fingers into it, and this will release all that juice. See, how I'm squishing this one. This one. I could barely put my thumb in because I haven't done the rolling thing yet. So I roll this guy. And if you put your ear closer, you could actually hear the crunch. So we usually do this for any citrus, orange, lemons, grapefruit, all those guys. Okay. So you wait into it. Now you can see how this becomes soft. All right. So I'm not going to I'm only going to need about two. I like one to one and a half. I might use two. Then just hold it like that and just one nice shot through. Okay. Like that. If you were doing it for like soups or like in Vietnamese, you like pho, when you get that soup, they'll cut it in quarters again. But that's another lesson. Okay. So let's get with the cilantro. So it says about three to four teaspoons. I'm sorry, tablespoons of cilantro. I like a lot of cilantro. But like we did with the parsley last time, we don't want any of the stem really. And this, so we'll just pull it right off a little bit like that. We don't want the stem, we just want the leaves. And if you remember last time, we just threw the stems into our stock pot if we have one, okay? Some of the branches are okay, so don't go crazy. I mean, you could just do one of these things and just rip them off the top, but don't waste this bit, okay? Always use that for something else. So I think we're pretty much good here, but then if you get some good sticks, big sticks, like this guy, hey, you wanna take those out. I mean, you could use some for garnish afterwards. We'll garnish with a few little things. I actually have some green plantain I wanna show you a little garnishing with. Keep the whole Latin theme going here strong. Okay, so get that nice. You know, as a chef, you try to, you become ambidextrous involuntarily. You find how to use both hands at the same time, almost like a drummer doing different tasks at the same time, okay? So I think we're pretty much good here on the cilantro, okay? And I'm going to just chop it like I did the parsley, okay? for our garlic nuts in the last recipe. Okay, just, just you wanna tame it down a little bit first. Do a little drum beat if you like, and just run it through, okay? So it's nice and dry. If it was wet, it would be all sticking and it'd be clumpy on the board. It would actually get slimy and black. So you don't want that, okay? Remember, speed comes with experience. Okay. Okay, bring that down. Okay. Do like this as well. Okay, so that seems pretty good right there. I'm going to get my bench scraper, clean this up, and move on to the next part. 
All right, cool. So I want to show you this new tool, well, new to you. It's called a mandolin. It's a Japanese mandolin, and it's, it's adjustable here for height. You could actually put different kind of teeth in there to get, like, strips or fine julienne. This is used a lot in Asian cooking and Japanese stuff. It's also good for making potato chips. Very thin, but very dangerous. Okay, so if you get a handle on one of these, make sure you have somebody teach you how to use it, like me in person. Be very, very careful. This blade is very sharp, so I'm adjusting the thickness. Because I'm going to use this to slice my green plantain thin. It's going to be part of my garnish. Um, okay, so we got, you can see here, oh, there's just a little bit of space there. Okay, so let me show you how to clean up green plantain real quick. Or platano, uh, platano verde. The black one, maduro, is a sweet one, more like a potato. But at this point when it's green, it's more of like a starchy potato almost. But very crispy. It's like a mix between... Potato, a little bit of essence of banana, but very crispy. I mean, it has its own, you know, unique flavor profile. All right, so we cut the tips off. I'll cut this tip off, okay. And you could either cut it in half, which people do, or you could use the whole way this way. I like to cut it in half because I'm going to slice into little shards, okay. And right here, this is very precarious, so this is just for demonstration purposes only. You want to just slightly go in with your knife like this. And then you could kind of peel it right off. Some people like to soak it in water. But I like to just do it like this straight up. Okay. There's so many things you could do with this. You could take mango, mofongo, modongo, all those good things. A lot of other dishes that you can make. All right. And just get that guy right off. So we got a nice clean piece right here. Okay. There's a little piece right there. All right. So this piece I'm going to take my mandolin again make sure to keep your area clean and then I'm going to go down ahead of me you don't go like this when you're using it so you do it once and check out the thickness I'm like ah I don't know about that one maybe a little thinner yeah it's definitely too thick so I'm going to adjust it underneath okay all right Okay, still a little too thick. So that's how it is, all right? But these, I won't go to waste. I'll do these. I'll make something else with them. Just lightly go through like this. You gotta be careful with your thumb. It's always good to use a guard or a knife or a, a cut glove that's resistant to cutting, okay? All right, so we have a few pieces here. They're good for frying, okay? And put these aside, okay? Plantains, I love plantains in so many different ways. This one, I'll save and do tostones with it. And it's a whole different recipe in itself, okay? Okay, so now the moment we've all been waiting for, okay? Time to prepare our avocados for smashage, okay? So a few techniques and one of my favorites, okay? So let's get this recipe close for three avocados, okay? So... Let's see how we cut an avocado properly. Okay, we don't go like this. We don't hack it. We don't like try to hit it like, you know, Zorro. You see the middle here? Most vegetables have a common running thing in fruits. That it's always cut through the middle first. Okay, with this, I see people like sawing on it and this like that. No, no, no. You have to pretty much run it down the knife. Okay, you don't you work the knife as much as you work the avocado. So just watch first and then I'll explain later. All right, so... Kind of go in like this, and I'm just moving the avocado pretty much. And I'm hitting the pit in the middle. That's what's stopping the knife from going through into my hand. And then you just roll the avocado all the way up. Once you get back to that seam that where we started. And then you give it a little twist. And look, you have this beautifully ripe avocado in the middle. No bruising, no nothing. Just beautiful green flesh, okay? Let me show you that one more time, okay? Right here through the middle, okay? Just, see, push it in, and I'm just rolling it up the knife. Okay, they should all be perfectly green inside because I ripen them. Like we said earlier, you want to ripen from green. Look at that, beautiful. No bruises, no browning on the sides, okay? And let's do our last one. Let's do the, hope for the best. And just look, I'm not moving the knife. I'm just moving the avocado. And that's how you get control and not slip. I see a lot of people really hurt themselves trying to open an avocado. So be very careful. Look, another perfect one. 
all right? So we have to take out the pit, okay? We don't dig it out because we'll ruin the flesh, especially if you want to scoop this out and slice it or dice it, depending on what application we're doing for. But this is guacamole, so you know we're going to smash this guy up, okay? So the heel of the knife near the bolster is the most important thing here. And this is just as sharp as this part, so be careful. You could either put it down or hold it in your hand, but preferably put it down. And using the heel, just give one of these things. I like to do it in my hand because I don't want to put any pressure on the back when I smash down because I don't want to bruise the flesh, okay? So now it's in there. Don't do anything. Just twist it. And if it's nice and ripe, it'll twist right off and you have that beautiful green flesh right there. Okay, so I'm going to discard these pits. Okay. Somewhere. Throw them in there for now. And I'll do the same thing. This time I'll do it in my hand. Just gently duck, and turn. Okay. Now, the important thing is once you do this, how do you get the pit off? That's another precarious situation. Okay, you, you don't go like this. You don't grab the knife. You don't. You just pinch it off. Okay. Take this bowl here that I'm going to use with a guac. And I'm pushing my, fing my pointer finger and my thumb. I'm just pinching it down. And it comes right out. Okay. Don't ever grab the knife. Don't ever try to pull it off the knife. That's the only safe way is just to push down. Push, just pinch it and just push slowly down because you're not, you can't cut your fingers if you're going down like that on the knife. Okay. Let me get rid of this pit. All right. So we got our beautiful pieces of avocado here. Okay. All right. So now you can either squeeze it into there like this, but I like to not just squeeze it out because you're not getting all the skin. And this is perfectly ripe, so you're not going to have no browning on this side either. Because remember, we got them when they were like this, and we controlled the bruise. Nobody played soccer with it, okay? So now we go here where the, the skin meets the flesh of the avocado. And you see it's just going in nicely because it's perfectly ripe. Okay, I'm just going to go in like that and just scoop under and just remove that. Okay, now you see the other side is beautiful. It's nice and green, no browning, no nothing here, okay? Just nice, beautiful green flesh, okay? If you get a little left in here, I'm gonna adjust my lighting in here, it's getting shadowy. You can scrape it out like that. You don't wanna waste any of that stuff, okay? All right. I think, wait. Okay, so I'm gonna do the rest now, all right? Let's get it all in there. I'm gonna scoop the sides. All that stuff in there. Okay. See? And nice and beautiful. Especially the other side. You see it's nice and green. No bruising, no blackening. Okay. This is guaranteed when you control the process. And if you get if you're crazy about guacamole and avocados, like me, like a lot of you are. Oh, got away from me there. Okay. This is what you want to do. Okay. Can never trust it a hundred percent. There's been times me too where I'm craving avocado or making sushi, and I gotta find that perfect avocado at the store. And I'll say ninety percent of the time, I get home, I open it up, and it looks kind of crappy. So you could do that thing that I was telling you. You could do that in a supermarket where you kind of no one's looking. Just peel that stem off. Okay, this one's so so fresh, it's not it can't even come off. But that's a tr trick to see when it's green. Okay. All right, so secondly, now we're going to go by our recipe. So I like to put the lime juice in second, especially if you're doing a really big bunch of guac. The lime will help it from turning brown, okay? But you see how much juice is coming out? Because you can see it there better. Because we look again, so much juice out of that half a lime, okay? All right, you could also, if it's a little tough on you, you could take a fork or spoon. Go in there and just twist it around with all that juice coming out. Okay. All right, and just, I'm gonna start with one and a half and I'm gonna adjust the seasoning if I need to. Like with everything you make, you guys gotta taste it before you're serving it, especially if you're making, you know, times in this recipe by 100 for a huge crowd. You definitely wanna make sure it's good, all right? Me, I like to smash this up a little bit with a fork or you, I like to use my hands as well but just to keep it you know just kidding. I like to leave some chunks in there okay right, look at that it's so nice and green you can get all that you can see it's 
see here. All right, I'm going to switch the light on my camera real quick. Bruise. Nobody played soccer with it. Okay. So now we go here where the, the skin meets the flesh of the avocado. And you see it's just going in nicely because it's perfectly ripe. Okay, I'm just going to go in like that. And just scoop under and just remove that. Okay, now you see the other side is beautiful. It's nice and green, no browning, no nothing here, okay? Just nice, beautiful green flesh, okay? If you get a little left in here, I'm gonna adjust my lighting in here, it's getting shadowy. You can scrape it out like that. You don't wanna waste any of that stuff, okay? All right. I think, wait. Okay, so I'm gonna do the rest now, all right? Let's get it all in there. I'm gonna scoop the sides. All that stuff in there. Okay. See, and nice and beautiful, especially the other side. You see, it's nice and green. No bruising, no blackening. Okay. This is guaranteed when you control the process. And if you get, if you're crazy about guacamole and avocados, like me, like a lot of you are, oh, got away from me there. Okay. This is what you want to do. Okay. Can never trust a hundred percent. There's been times me too where I'm craving avocado or making sushi, and I gotta find that perfect avocado at the store. And I'll say ninety percent of the time, I get home, I open it up, and it looks kind of crappy. So you could do that thing that I was telling you. You could do that in a supermarket where you kind of no one's looking. Just peel that stem off. Okay, this one's so so fresh. It's not. It can't even come off. But that's a tr trick to see when it's green. Okay. All right, so secondly, now we're going to go by our recipe. So I like to put the lime juice in second, especially if you're doing a really big bunch of guac. The lime will help it from turning brown, okay? But you see how much juice is coming out? Because you can see it there better. Because we look again so much juice out of that half a lime, okay? All right, you could also, if it's a little tough on you, you could take a fork or spoon, Go in there and just twist it around with all that juice coming out. Okay. All right, and just, I'm gonna start with one and a half and I'm gonna adjust the seasoning if I need to. Like with everything you make, you guys gotta taste it before you're serving it, especially if you're making, you know, times in this recipe by 100 for a huge crowd. You definitely wanna make sure it's good, all right? Me, I like to smash this up a little bit with a fork or you, I like to use my hands as well but just to keep it you know just kidding. I like to leave some chunks in there okay and look at that it's so nice and green you can get all that you can see here all right I'm gonna switch the light on my camera real quick okay I apologize this sun was kind of going down so I'll put the light on so you can see a little better so you see all that nice green Okay, just gonna smash it up with the back of my fork. You could, I like to use gloves too if I have a lot and just squeeze it through. But I wanna leave it a little chunky and go mix under. Anytime you're using a bowl, make sure to mix under, okay? So I don't wanna over mash it, so I'm gonna start putting the rest of my stuff in, all right? So we have our mise en place fret. Remember, you gotta show this picture. Tomatoes, jalapeno, garlic and onion, and our sliced cilantro, okay? All this is going to go in and we mash. Then we're going to add salt to taste and some pepper. Not too much pepper because, there he is, because the black pepper is going to add a little heat. But we don't need the heat because we have these guys here. Okay, and if you left the seeds in, they'll be very nice and spicy. All right, so everybody goes into the party here. One, two, okay, I'll knock it out. Three. Okay, four, there we go, okay, and then I, it's about a teaspoon of salt, so then one or two nice pinches in there, nice good kosher salt, my like fancy electric um, pepper mill, set to a fine thing, a fine grind, put that over there, all right. Some people like to add cumin, this and that. Usually I'm a purist, I don't even add the tomato and onion. I just mash it up with the cilantro and everything else. So, let's get under there, nice. Okay. 
I mean, the secret to really good guacamole, guys, is you got to control the ripening process with the avocados. You really have to get a good avocado that's really green, really hard, and you can ripen it yourself in a dark, cool place or even in a brown bag. All right, so just mix it nicely. You want to leave some of those chunks in there. Okay. This is a really good recipe. I and mean, if you want chunky, you can add like a little bit more avocado, but it's a good consistency. Okay. And then we're just going to give it a little taste. Mm. I think it's on point, but I want a little chunky, so I'm going to add another half. Remember, roll. Roll it up the knife right to the seam. Crack that open, beautiful. Now I want to save this guy, you could wrap it, this and that, but someone's probably going to eat it soon. And this one I'll show you, we could just squeeze in if you want, okay? I'm just going to add that in there, just squeeze it. But you can see how it's a little bit more messy, it's not as fluid as doing it with a spoon, okay? So, if you're doing a lot of these, if you're working somewhere and you're doing many of them, or if you're catering, I suggest to, you know, use a spoon, all right? So I just did the seasoning. I think it just needs a little, a little bit more salt. I'm just the spice is good. It's not too hot because I also want to give it to my kids, which I forgot, and I don't like burning them up. You know, if you lose the trust in somebody with your food, it's bad. So you got to make sure that it's good. All right. So I'm gonna plate this up real quick. Give you some plating ideas. Just simple garnish. Okay. So we have our stuff here. A lot of people like to serve it in the actual guacamole itself. I mean, I'm sorry, in the shell. So you could do one of these things. All right. Put it back in the avocado husk. Give it a little more of these things there, and you're good to go. I mean, you could do something like this. This is really simple. If you want to put it, if it's a side for like a dish. Like if you have like a grilled steak or something, a churrascaria, you just do something like this, really simple, okay? That's one way, all right? Put that to the side. Another way, especially if it's a little more upscale. Okay, boom, all right? All right. Make sure everything's good. Make sure you scoop underneath. And just drop it in the middle. You don't want to get the sides of your bowl, okay, or the sides of the plate like we did last time. You want to make sure everything is nice and settled. Okay. And build a little mountain guac building all the way up. I know I don't have a side camera. I apologize. This would be better in person, ideally. So this is coming up just a little bit up out of the bowl. Move it to the center here. Okay, so we got a few things we can add. I like to add a couple things. So. I have my fried platano, which I showed you just now. So you can put some of these around. You know, just, you know, push it in a little bit so it'll stick. A little crisscross motion here. Maybe another bunch over here. Just put it in there like that. And you can kind of just have them all sticking up like this. It's always nice to have some height. Okay, don't worry if it falls down. Reminds me of ceviche, now I want to make some ceviche here. Okay. All right. Maybe tear some cilantro leaves, throw them on the top here. Okay, if you had some microgreens, you could do that as well. I like to put some jalapeno in front here, just a little bit. Okay, so I'm here, there, just dangling around. I don't have my tweezers right now, go like that. All right. Put a line on the side. Okay, you can do one of these things. All right. And some of that diced tomato we saved. Just add a little bit, just to break that green monotony of color. Okay. That looks pretty nice. Maybe a couple more. Oh. And then the biggest concern is when the waiters grab this and they don't start dropping it everywhere. Okay. So that's pretty decent right there. 
maybe another little lime right here. You don't want to you don't want to over garnish, and also you don't want to garnish with stuff that you don't really use. Okay. All right. So I think that's it for now. I just want to end with the pumpkin, so you can see it here, and then you can devour this bad boy here. All right. So let me just. Okay. So finally, like I said, I want to show you guys the avocado. Uh, I'm sorry, the pumpkins. All right, just real quick, just to end this, just so you see how. All right, so just the top and bottom. Remember, firm grip. This is just for demonstration. If you try this, you got to have some really good stability with that knife. Then cut it in half, definitely give it a slam right there. All right, and you cut it open like so. I like to do one of these things, almost like a cantaloupe, and then you could scrape that all out, okay? I like to use a knife to shave it down, just and use the rest to get that out. So, okay, use the back of the knife. All right, and then just, I'm going to roast these tonight. You could... So I have these nice segments here, and if you saw the pumpkin pie recipe that I went over a couple a week ago, you just rub this with olive oil, salt, and pepper, roast it for about 40 minutes, and the flesh will be nice, sweet, and tender. These are the small sugar sweet pumpkins that you can still find now. I got these at ShopRite today. They were two for five on sale, okay? And once this is done, this skin will peel right off beautifully, and you could use it for making whatever, raviolis, Pie, empanadas, custards, mousse, muffins, lattes, whatever the heck <laughs> pumpkin spice uh, dreams are made of, okay? Just one better angle here. You can see you can serve this as a side. If you're doing a bunch of steaks with people, you can just throw that on the side. Especially if you're doing like, you know, radizio, Brazilian grill kind of thing. Just easy just to pop on. And this is just a little dark in my house. No, but you can see from a better angle, the height, and this all sticks out like this. Then you could use the plantain chips to dip as well, okay? And, you know, my mom, all right? All right, guys, enjoy this video and everything else, and I will see you uh, online. To keep it from browning, put some cling film and just push it down against, get the air out and push it up against the plastic wrap and create a seal. Some people like to put oil, other things, but if you do this, kind of works the best okay so you trap get all that air out okay and doing so and if you get a little brown on top you just scrape it off okay see nice nice okay